Uh, hello, so for those of you who don't know, Lyft is one of the largest fashion marketplaces in the world. What we do is we aggregate the inventories of the leading department stores, boutiques, and brands, and bring them all into one place for the convenience of our consumer. So we're growing pretty quickly. We're now on a $40 million run rate, uh, and that number six weeks ago was 20 million, so it's doubled in a very short period of time, growing quite fast. And our consumer is largely in the States. So many people think we're an American business, but we're actually based here in London. And there's not much that London does that is, that is truly top of class in consumer web, but fashion is one of those things. More billions of dollars have been created in online fashion businesses here in London than anywhere else in the world. So we're very, very happy to be here. Here's a visualization of what we do. So right now, the world of fashion is super fragmented across all these department stores and brands that I mentioned. The first thing we do is we bring them together to the for the benefit of the consumer. And then uniquely, we try to create this personalized shopping experience for each one of our millions of shoppers. And we do that primarily using a social curation model. So it's a little bit like Twitter. She will come on, she'll follow her favorite brands, favorite stores, some magazines and bloggers. And then on top of that, we overlay some, um, some recommendation algorithms. So to use like a real world analogy, it's a bit like having a boutique that, that only I'm allowed in to, uh, to, into that has just the items that I'm going to be interested in in the front. And as I go to look in the stock room, there is every item that's available to buy in the world of online fashion. So really, it's, it's quite a simple idea behind it. When, I, when we think about you know, where I want to buy, if I want to buy a book online, I know where I'm going to go. If I want to buy a ticket online, or a computer, or a CD, I pretty much know where I'm going to go. But in fashion, you know, that destination has not been built yet. It's still super fragmented. And we believe that when we look at the winners of each of the biggest categories in e-commerce, it's data companies that really become uh, the, the, the key players. And, and the, the reason for that is fairly simple. The consumers have this amazing selection. And then again, with our, with our particular service, we do give her that personalized experience. The brands can get more customers and they get these analytics. And in the fashion industry, that's very important. A lot of the brands are very uh, keen to understand who the consumer is, what she's buying, what products are doing well in their uh, sort of competitive landscape. And then for us, it's an incredibly simple business model. We obviously don't go anywhere near product, nor, nor will we ever do that. We simply take a commission on all, on all sales. So while it's a very simple business model, it's actually incredibly complex to do that. You know, the fashion world, for the most part, is unfortunately quite uh, technophobic. They don't really know what APIs are, uh, although that's, that's changing slowly. So we have to. Um, we have to, to, to effectively have integrations with all of these stores and update our inventory in real time, which is sort of millions of data points. And the complexity is really why we are such uh, a data-driven team. So we're about 40 people. You can see a third of us are data scientists and data engineers, data, you know, people with PhDs from Google, Bloomberg, et cetera. You know, this is a very different makeup from what a normal e-commerce business would be, because for every uh, warehouse full of products run by operations and logistics people that our partners might have, we have servers full of rich real-time data uh, that need to be managed uh, in, in, um, in a serious way. We have uh, three offices, so London is the headquarters. We do have a small office in New York. As I mentioned, 70% of our business comes from the States, uh, and many of our partners are, are based in the States as well. And uh, we also have uh, an engineering team in Slovenia. Um, my co-founder is Slovenian, and, uh, and that's the sort of reason behind that. So to dig into the experience a little bit more, consumers can browse the entire world of online fashion in one place. So if you're looking for a very specific item or even a type of item, she's better off finding it on list than anywhere else. Uh, secondly, she can personalize her shopping experience using that following model that I mentioned. And critically, she can buy on our platform. So this is, this is uh, historically, we were in a, an affiliate uh, model where we're redirecting, but in the summer and in the US only, we launched our universal checkout. So now for the first time ever in fashion, consumers can add 10 things that they like from five of their favorite stores, buy in a single step on the web, on the mobile, um, and, uh, and that's profoundly changing our business. So I think the, the fashion industry was looking for this uh, for a number of years, the consumers were very keen for it, and finally, you know, we now have, as one of the newspapers put it, this, this one cart to rule them all. Uh, and uh, it's profoundly changed three things for us. You know, we're taking a slightly higher commission from our partners, so we're into double-digit double commission. We uh, have a much higher conversion rate because it's so much easier to buy. 
And then thirdly, it's that loyalty, that repeat rate, because people can come and have a much closer relationship with you. So here's a closer look at some of the growth that we're seeing. I think this, this number is a little bit out of date. We're actually, we'll be well into 10 million, uh, over $10 million uh, GMV this quarter. Uh, and then a bit of background, so as, as I mentioned earlier, I used to be on the venture capital side but left four years ago to start this business and we are in fact a venture backed business as well. So we have uh, about 15 months ago we did our Series A from Excel and from DFJ. We were uh, about 15 times smaller back then and we're on track to being profitable before we uh, run out of money so, so in pretty good shape there. Cool. Thank you.